Hi, I'm Jack and welcome back to Real Opinions. Uh, today I'm going to be covering Sing Street, which is a 2016 Irish musical. It came up in my 2016 best of list, which is a podcast that should be out either now or later, depending on how productive I am. And also I covered it because uh, La La Land is now out in the UK for wide release. And I've sort of been going back and watching other musicals just because I've enjoyed that. And Sing Street is sort of the last, the most recent good musical that I can remember. So the film is directed by John Carney, uh, who also did one. Uh, which I believe won an Oscar but and it was very popular however I don't know anything about that whatsoever uh, as well as Begin Again starring Keira Knightley and Mark Ruffalo which was good and it had some nice moments but uh, doesn't compare to this I don't think uh, so this is his third feature it's set in 1980s Dublin and it follows school kid Connor he's around 15 14 uh, he's sort of the middle child so he's got an older brother that is a uh, has-been really had a lot of prospect in the past but now just has thrown it all away just lives in the attic smoking weed and listening to records all day his mum and dad are fighting constantly and immediately right off you can tell they're on the brink of separating as well as on top of all of this the kind of catalyst for starting the film is that they are now suffering from financial problems as well so they not only do they have to sell uh, the house that he's been raised in but he also has to go out of his private school into public school which if you know anything about the history of 1980s uh, Ireland it means that he's going to a rather rough Catholic school where you know they have no problem with uh, beating you if you don't do what they say and so on one hand it's about Connor kind of dealing with uh, this massive change in his family life then secondly it's about him being shoved in this institution where he really doesn't want to be and now he's got this very he's got this very strict force oppressing him every single day of his life now in the form of his teachers and head teacher which sort of become the very classic like teenage uh, rebel against the system part of him and then the third part is that he spots a girl, uh, Rafina, across the road from the school. She's always waiting there, dressed much more fashionably than anyone around, so it's clear that she just doesn't go to school, and she's always waiting there for someone to pick her up. And eventually he plucks up the courage to go and talk to her, and she says that she's a full-time model. And so, to kind of blag his way into her life, he, he says that he's looking for a model for the music video for his, for his new band. She kind of reluctantly agrees that if she likes the music, she'll do the video. And so he has to now rush about and get this band together, and and yeah, and that's sort of following the rest of the film. It's not just like leading up to one big song or anything like that. Throughout the film, it's a progression of songs that they film the videos with with her. As I already said in the beginning, I really enjoyed it. I think it's definitely one of the best modern musicals around. And having seen it twice now, I'd happily see it again because it's it's just really enjoyable. Not to say that it's perfect, which I'll definitely go into, but I, I think I'll just start off with what made me like it so much and why I could come back to it. So start off with the obvious, uh, the music. All of the songs are catchy and they stick in your head really well. And they're just all fun. Um, I had a bit of a problem the first time I watched it in that I thought the first half of songs were much higher quality than the second half. I don't think there's as much of a gap now uh, as in I think the second songs I enjoyed them more the second time round. And it's not so much that some songs are less memorable, like there is a song near the end, uh, Brown Shoes, and uh, another song, Girls, which aren't unforgettable, but it's the fact that other songs near the beginning are much more memorable and they stick with you throughout the film as they kind of bring it back uh, in little moments. I don't think that's a problem. In another lesser musical, I think that those songs that I would deem more forgettable in this film would probably be the standout ones in that film. That's sort of what I'm saying. Another thing I like about this film is that it's not just that it's trying to be a band musical, it's not trying to just be a pop musical, but the songs also not only just play into the story because of the main character is writing all of the songs in story, but it's also about how the music develops as the characters develop, as well as every single song is different in some way. Not like completely different genres, but it's really using to show the whole scope of the 80s as well as showing a, de a development in the main character, which I really liked. There's a clear cycle. Connor will sit down with his stoner brother and the stoner brother will discuss how this new band is like the next great thing and it's how it's really interesting. So the first example being uh, Duran Duran. Uh, Connor will make a song mimicking that style. They'll film the video, it'll be fun, and then they have to write another song for some reason. And he, and then it has another conversation with the brother about how, oh, the problem with your last song was that it wasn't deep enough, and so this band is a lot more deep, and so he'll make uh, a song like The Cure. That kind of cycle continues throughout the film. It's not an in-your-face formula, it's just, it's a nice structure, and I think that that works. It plays well into the story of the film as well, and between the relationship between his, him and his brother, because it shows how much he values his brother and how much he worships him, despite the fact that 
his brother really hasn't done anything with his life. I won't go much more into the songs besides that, I just think that they're all catchy, they're all really fun. One of my slight problems with La La Land was just that I wanted more songs. That wasn't that a negative point, it's just that I wanted more, that would have been even better if I had gotten more. And I feel like with Sing Street you get just the right amount of songs. Like I said, some do stand out more than others, but at the same time there's a whole catalogue there. And if you're not feeling like listening to one particular song, you can then listen to another. But yeah, and now going on to what I think actually almost is better than the songs, which are the characters and their relationships. All of the people in this film feel really quite authentic and really just fun, and you... I don't think you would have enjoyed the songs nearly as much if it wasn't these characters singing them and these characters interacting in their music videos as you're watching them. I feel like the director's last film, uh, Begin Again, really wanted to play on this authenticity. Uh, with this, I think not only is it because it's a story from sort of playing on his own background, being Irish and growing up in that kind of era. Obviously, this isn't accurate to his childhood, but it's it's pulling from something that I think he can relate to. It's using child actors, which I think I think it means that his dialogue plays off a lot more sincere. When adults are talking about how love is like this or love is like that or depending on people, etc., etc., it's a lot harder to stomach. But when it's teenagers doing about it and they're learning about love and all of that for the first time, it just fits much more nicely in. They're very different filmmakers, but I kind of find this relationship with um, Wes Anderson. Well, I wasn't particularly fond of a lot of the adult Wes Anderson films because it had this childlike wonder for it. But being about adult stories, it just, I felt like there was a disconnect. And then Moonrise Kingdom came out, which is a story about children, about childhood stories and about growing up. And I think that that really fit his style really well. And I really enjoyed that. And that's definitely the same sort of comparison that I'd make with Sing Street and John Carney here. But yeah, anyway, the main thing that I wanted to get out with that point, which really rambled out, is just that all the characters are memorable no matter how little time they get on the screen. They all are at least meaningful to, if not the main character, to other characters. There are one or two that have, that seem like their only purpose is just for like one joke and then they're in the background for the rest of the film and they don't have much of a personality besides that. And then there are other characters where while they are portrayed well and they're really enjoyable to watch, they they have a very generic storyline and you can see where it's going right from the very beginning. Now I'm going to get into some of the negatives of this. My main negative point would be the ending. Not like the actual plot point, just its execution mainly. In that throughout this entire film, not only is it the songs that the band have created, but it is 1980s music uh, that's playing in the background forever. And as they get to the end, there's a end scene. It suddenly starts playing a modern song, uh, an original song for the film. And it feels like the most generic song on the entire film. Um, there's no reason for it to be there when you couldn't have had another 1980s classic or perhaps uh, another song from the band. It felt like it was forced in there just so they could maybe get a nomination somewhere for best original song. I don't know why they would do that. And it made the whole ending, which this whole film has been building up to, much cheesier and false than it needed to be. I know it's a strange thing to say that my one big problem with this film was one song at the end, but it is. it just felt like copping out at the last minute. The main reason that's my main big problem with it is just that that's the most standout problem where I could have gone, yeah, that's easily replaceable. All the other problems I have are just with small technical things, like sometimes I find the uh, almost documentarian style of the camera to be a bit annoying and not really necessary for what he's trying to do uh, with the musical. Uh, occasionally they'll cut to a shot which is just obviously a bit lesser quality, which I can't really explain. And I wouldn't really notice those things like if that was if the film was all that quality I don't think I would mind as much as the fact that it seems to just randomly dip for the occasional shot or it feels like almost like inserts or they've sent like a B team to go film some parts on the other hand I'd say a positive is that when it when they are filming their own music videos I really enjoyed that that felt like genuinely authentic with all the VHS tapes and it was for me it was even though I never did the whole band thing as a kid it reminded me of making films as a kid and doing all of that and that was even more fun and it had the same kind of camera moves that every teenage kid would do and it was just very fun it, th that stuff I really enjoyed for the technical part I'm not saying it's a perfect film by any means no big examples besides that song are coming to mind it's just that there's so many little moments throughout where um, brings me out of the film just a tiny bit thinking that could have been done better or that didn't need to be the way it was and overall it just it kind of leaves you with a it, it leaves me 
with the feeling of that was really great, but it wasn't perfect. And you can't, like I said, I can't pinpoint exactly one reason for this is the moment where it stopped being really great. I would recommend this for anyone, even if you like musicals or not, because unless you absolutely hate 80s music, but I think that there's enough in here for anyone to really enjoy, and maybe not love. I think that there's at least one song where everyone can enjoy it, or one character that they at least enjoy the comedy of. Yeah, I feel like it's a film that I'm going to come back to, not because I'm like, oh, I want to watch a really great film, but just if I want to just put something fun on for two hours or something like that, or if I just feel like watching a, a, a film with songs in. Yeah, Sing Street. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we have social links in the description. Uh, if you want to watch other reviews, we have everything on this channel, as well as podcasts uh, on iTunes. Great. Thank you very much.